Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are simplifying simple entry. Specifically, I'm going to show you how to do note entry using just a laptop keyboard. Now, whenever we use a laptop with simple entry, we do want to make sure that the laptop shortcut table is set. And to do that, just make sure you're in the simple entry tool. Uh, choose simple from the menu, and then simple entry options. And then down here, we'll choose edit keyboard shortcuts. And at the bottom, where it says Keyboard Shortcut Set, make sure that you have Laptop Shortcut Table selected and click OK. All right, now that option will stay that way uh, forever until you change it. So if you quit Finale and come back, it will still be set that way, all right? Um, and what that will do is it will allow Simple Entry to be more friendly to a laptop keyboard layout, all right? Now once we've done that, we have, we're in our Simple Entry tool and we can see our Simple Entry cursor. It's this little vertical purple line and there's a, um, a quarter note grade out there that shows us where we are. And uh, we can get to a different measure simply by uh, holding down Option and clicking in another measure with the mouse. And we can go to any measure we want to start entry that way. Once we're in a measure like this, we can actually move around with Command and arrow keys. So Command right will move to the right, left to the left and down will move between, up and down will move between staffs, all right? So once you get to where you want to start, we can start entering notes. And other, uh, other than that, if you, have, if you happen to have a note highlighted in this manner where we, the, the cursor has gone away, um, to get that cursor back, just press the right arrow key and you'll be able to get that cursor there, all right? So entering notes uh, with the laptop keyboard is fairly simple. D we're going to want to choose the rhythm with the numbers. That's the, the number row above the, the top layer, le the top row of letters. Uh, and these are the, the numbers corresponding to their rhythm. So five for quarter, six for half, et cetera, eight to double whole. Let me go down eighth, sixteenth, thirty second, and one for sixty fourth note. All right. Now you notice in the simple entry palette we have those same things. You could actually just select it in this manner if you want, but the numbers are a quick way to do that. The one rhythm that we don't we don't have is the 128th note. It is in the simple entry palette, but it's not. We don't have a a, a keystroke for it. So if you want 128th note, you do have to use the mouse to get there. All right. But uh, once we have a rhythm selected, say we're going to enter eighth notes, you'll see that the eighth note, uh, the cursor is now an eighth note. We can use the up and down arrows to move up and down the staff to find the pitch that we want. Once we've found it, just press return and it will enter that pitch. And then we can move to a different pitch, enter a different pitch, just like that. All right. Um, incidentally, shift up will jump an octave and shift down will jump down an octave. So that will uh, help you navigate a little bit quicker. All right. And again, if we want to choose a different rhythm, choose a different rhythm and then different pitches that way, okay? There's another way to find the pitches. We don't have to use the up and down arrows. We can use the A through G keys to get us notes A through G. So if I've got the quarter note selected and I press A, I'm gonna get an A. B for a B, C for a C, etc. okay? And uh, there is a small trick to this is in that where I have the cursor right now on that C, if I were to choose F, it's always going to choose the F that's closest to the where the cursor is, or it's going to choose the note that's closest to where the cursor is. So F, in this case, would be above, not below, right? So if we're on C, G, on the other hand, would the, the closest G would be below where that cursor is. So it does matter a little bit slightly where that cursor is when you use A through G to enter notes this way, all right? Uh, one of the things that I kind of like about entering notes in Finale in simple entry in this way is that when you get to an en the end of a bar like this, now, if I were to enter a half note, it would be too long to for the rest of that bar. But what Finale will do is tie it into the next bar. All right, so it's kind of nice that you can get, you know, slews of syncopations in this manner and uh, not have to worry about using, you know, tying and then quarter to quarter, et cetera. All right, it is a neat little trick to do. All right, um, what about intervals? If we want to add an interval, enter the note first. And using the F1 through F8 keys, and on a Mac laptop, by the way, if you have one of those touch bar uh, laptops, you do have to use the function key to even see those F keys, right? Um, so F1 through F8 will give me a unison through an octave above the pitch that's highlighted. In this case, the A is highlighted. You can see it's purple. So function F3 will give me a third. And now that that C is highlighted, if I press F3 again, it will give me a third above the C, not above the original A, right? That's how we can do that. We can get uh, unison through octave that way, and we can get a ninth above 
if we use Command Shift F9, right? Just a couple extra keystrokes, Command Shift F9 to get that ninth above. We can also get uh, intervals below using Shift function keys. So Shift F F2 through F9, actually F1 won't work. Shift F2 through F9 for a second through a ninth. So Shift, uh, come on, there we go. Shift F3 will give me a third below and a third below that. All right, and uh, there is another way to do this to add pitches to a chord. So let's say we enter that A again here. We can use Shift A through G to add those pitches. So from here, I could choose Shift C to get a C. Shift E would add an E to it, all right? And again, this ha ha slightly has to do with where the original note is. So if I have that B there, if I were to choose Shift E, again, the, the E that's above the B is closer than the E that's below, so we'll always add that E above, and that's uh, contextual based on the note that's highlighted, right? Shift G will give you the G there, all right? And one final way to do this, if we enter a note, um, you can, from here, if you mer move the cursor to a specific pitch, so let's say I wanna enter an, a D, um, we can use Command Function Return to add the pitch at, the ca at where the uh, carrot is, essentially, right? So I can move all the way up here if I want, and it'll add it all the way over there, all right? Uh, so several ways to add intervals. How about rests? Uh, for a rest, just choose the rhythm that you want. So let's say we're gonna put an eighth rest, and there's several ways to do this. The first is with the zero key. You press zero and you get a rest. Um, there's the other way is with option return, will give you a rest. Shift return will also give you a rest. And finally, tab, will give you a rest. So you have four different ways to enter rest directly uh, in simple entry in that manner. Also, if you have a note, if you enter a note, um, you can turn that note that you just entered, it's still highlighted, with the R key, it will turn it into a rest, all right? So there's actually five different ways to enter a rest in simple entry. And incidentally, if you have that rest selected like that and you press R again, it will toggle it back to no a note. But the thing to note about that note <laughs> is that it will always uh, uh, be put on the middle staffs, uh, the middle line of the staff. So it will always be a, a B in this case in treble clef. All right, so that's R. Deleting is fairly easy. Whatever is highlighted, if you press delete, it will go away, just like that. And incidentally, if you have uh, uh, something highlighted that's not the last thing, it will move the it will move everything to the left. So if I delete that first chord, it will move that second chord to the left. And then from here, if I delete, it will just move. And if I delete the last one all the way to the left, it will bring my cursor back, all right? So that's deleting. Um, dotted notes are fairly easy. So if we enter a quarter note here, all we need to do is press the period and we get a dotted. And then we can enter another note. We can enter another dotted eighth note if we want. Easy enough, all right? Um, we can also get what I would call sticky dots, which means that uh, it will just allow you to enter slews of dotted notes. And that's why I've got this compound meter of 6-8 set up over here to illustrate this better. So if I choose my uh, quarter note, instead of, uh, before I enter the note, uh, uh, press shift period. <coughs> and what you'll see in the simple entry palette is that the period or the dot will now be selected as well as the quarter note, which means that whatever you enter is gonna be a dotted quarter note now. So enter a, a, a note, dotted quarter note, the next one dotted quarter note, right? So this will allow you to enter, you know, slews of dotted quarter notes, which is particularly handy in uh, compound meters, all right? Uh, so that's dots and sticky dots, period and shift, and shift period, yep. Uh, ties are fairly easy, and you always have to press shift period again to unsticky it, right? So it will toggle on and off with shift period. Ties are fairly easy. If we enter a note and press T, we will get a tie. And again, T will keep toggling it on and off until you're happy. <laughs> and then enter another note and it will get tied. Uh, it's, and if you enter a note and then enter another note, you can tie backwards as well with Shift T, right? And again, Shift T will toggle it on and off. So Shift T for tying backwards T for tying forwards, right? T and shift T. And we can even do 
uh, sticky ties, which could be handy sometimes if you, you know, for example, want to enter a slew of um, whole notes that are tied. Just select the whole note set with seven. And to get a uh, sticky tie, we're going to do Command Shift T. And again, you'll notice that the tie is now selected in the simple entry palette, which means that when I start entering notes, it will already have the tie there. And again, Command Shift T will undo that. So now it's gone. And the last note you put in will not have a tie after it. All right. <coughs> so that's ties. T, Shift T for backwards ties and Command Shift T for sticky ties. All right. <coughs> How about accidentals? Let me just go back up here and get back to the beginning. And let's enter a D. Uh, accidentals are fairly easy. With the equals key, it will raise the pitch by a half step. And the minus key will lower it by a half step. So D flat equals to get it back to D natural. And then D sharp. And we can, go we can keep going. D double sharp. And actually, we can keep going all the way up to seven sharps is as far as you can go. And then minus will cycle back down <coughs> all the way to seven flats, is which is as far as you can go. And also, no matter what accidental you have in here, if you have a D double sharp, N will always give you a natural, right? And this is a little bit more handy if you've got an F, for example, and you want that to be F natural. Just use the N key for natural, all right? Now we can also do sticky sharps and sticky flats and sticky naturals and sticky plus and minus half steps as well. But sticky sharps and flats are the only ones that have a quick uh, keyboard shortcut. And they would be option equals and option flat for, uh, for uh, sticky sharps and sticky flats respectively. So if I were to press option equals, you'll see that the sharp now gets highlighted. So if I were to enter some notes, all of them will be sharp. The C will not show sharp because it's in the key signature, right? But everything else will be sharp. And again, option equals will undo that sharp. Option minus will give me flats. You can see that's highlighted now. And then everything will be flat, right? Now, there, like I said, there's no, um, <coughs> there's no keyboard shortcut for the naturals, but we can select it with the mouse if we just select it that way. And then everything will have naturals. And of course, the only thing that will show up natural is the C, the F, and the G in this key signature, right? <coughs> and then plus, and plus one half and minus one half will function slightly differently, uh, which is kind of handy sometimes. Uh, if you have the plus half selected there, we'll get sharp A, sharp B. C will give us a double sharp because it's going a half step above what what's in the key signature. So C sharp to C double sharp, right? Same with F and G give us F and G double sharp, right? And then same thing with minus a half, right? It will give us A flat, oops, A flat G natural because it's a half step lower than the G sharp in the key signature, right? So a slight difference between the, the um, plus minus one half and the sharp and flat uh, and natural sticky uh, tools right there, all right? And of course, Again, natural plus and minus one half you have to select with a mouse. All right, so that is accidentals. Grace notes are fairly simple. Uh, just enter your note, and to get a grace note, choose option G, and it will turn it into a grace note. And then you can enter another note, and you've got your grace note there. All right, again, enter a note, option G will turn it into a grace note, and you're on your way. We can do sticky grace notes too. If you want to do a run of grace notes, just choose Command G, and you'll see the grace note tool gets highlighted. And then, actually, let's make it eighth notes. So A, B, C will give us three grace notes in a row. And again, Command G will turn it off. So then the next note will not be a grace note. All right, so that's grace notes. Option G and Command G for sticky grace notes. Easy enough. And finally, let's talk about tuplets. Uh, in order to get a tuplet, we're going to first want to enter the rhythm of the of the value of the tuplet that we want. So if we want an eighth note triplet, we want to enter an eighth note first. So enter your eighth note, and then press 9, and that will create a tuplet, right? And all you have to do from there is just enter the rest of the eighth notes in there. So if I were to choose 5 first for quarter note, enter a note and press 9, I would get a quarter note triplet. Right? And again, for an eighth note triplet, choose the eighth 
note first, enter it, nine, and then fill out the rest of the triplet, all right? We can do sticky uh, triplets too with command nine. And again, you'll see the triplet gets highlighted. And from here, we can just enter slews of triplets as until we're done with our triplets. And again, command nine will turn that off and then we can start entering normal uh, non-tuplified notes, all right? Um, let's say we want a tuplet that's not a triplet. Um, let's say let's, uh, we're going to do five sixteenths in the space of four. So choose your sixteenth, enter the note, and instead of nine, we're going to choose option nine, and we'll get the simple entry tuplet definition. And from here, we can change the, the definition of the tuplet. So what we're going to want is put five, and use current just means that it's going to use whatever we just entered as the um, the value of the tuplet. So use current means 16th notes. So five 16th notes in the space of four use current, which is 16th notes, right? And click OK. And it will create that five tuplet for you, all right? Um, and there's a couple things I wanted to show you about this. Oh, yeah, so uh, I showed you the, the use current, right? So let's say I were to enter... Let's say I wanted to enter the uh, the swing tuplet rhythm, which would be quarter note, eighth note, under an eighth note triplet, basically. Now, obviously, if I enter an, a quarter note first, if I were to press nine to create a triplet, it would create a quarter note triplet because I've already defined the triplet as starting with the quarter note, right? But if I choose option nine instead, what we can do instead of use current is we can select eighth notes. In the, so three eighth notes in the space of two eighth notes. Now, regardless of the fact that I put in a quarter note here, this is going to create an eighth note triplet. It's just that the first note is going to be a quarter note because that's what I entered, right? If that makes sense. And you click OK, and you'll see that all you have left to do is add the eighth note to that tuplet. And you've got a uh, swing rhythm, you know, quarter eighth kind of tuplet swing thing, right? Um, so that's how you can do that. And there's one other thing I wanted to show you in there. And let's just say, let's go to a different measure. Let's just say we're going to enter those five tuplets again. <coughs> so enter your 16th note here, option 9. All right, so let's say 5, use current in the space of 4, use current, right? Now we have this option here, save as default simple entry tuplet definition. Now if I check that and click OK, the first thing it's going to do is create that 5 tuplet for me like I want, right? But now the next time I enter a tuplet with simply the 9 key without going into option 9 and all that business, just press the 9 key and it will create another 5 tuplet for me. All right. So this will allow me to, you know, I don't have to always go into that, uh, that uh, dialog box to create this tuplet if this is, <coughs> you know, prevalent in the, the piece that I'm writing. All right. Um, and we can even do uh, sticky tuplets in this manner. So again, command 9, you know. And now I can just enter a whole slew of these five tuplets, all right? And this can even be used, Command-9 to undo the stickiness. This can even be used in the swing rhythm, which is handy. So again, enter the quarter note, option 9, and we're going to, again, let's do three eighth notes in the space of two eighth notes, right? We don't want to use current in this instance. Um, save as default, right? Click OK, and it's going to create that triplet to start, right? And now, Command-9 to create that sticky tuplet again, right? And now all we have to do, quarter note, eighth note, quarter note, eighth note, quarter note, eighth note, quarter note, eighth note, all right? So we can sort of make quick work of that uh, swing rhythm um, if we use that uh, combination of option 9 and saving the default triplet definition, right? Now, there's one thing to be aware of, that, that default triplet tuplet definition, sorry, that default tuplet definition will stay that way until the end of time, until you change it back, right? So if you go to a different file, if you close Finale and open it, you know, after a two-week vacation, that tuplet, uh, that default tuplet will still be defined in the last way that you had it. So again, if you're entering this string of five sixteenth notes and, you know, you, you come back later and you try and enter a triplet and you get a five tuplet, that's why. It's because that... Uh, default tuplet has been redefined for the until the end of time until you change it back all right uh, so that's just how that works 
So I covered a lot. We we got uh, notes, we've got intervals, rests, dotted notes, ties, accidentals, grace notes, and tuplets. Um, I hope you've learned a lot. And now you now you can you know enter notes just using a laptop keyboard. You don't need anything more than that, and uh, it's fairly easy. It's just sort of like typing. Um, so thanks for watching, uh, and uh, come back, and we'll uh, we'll touch on some more simplifying simple entries soon.